masking fluid. I used to use brushes, but now I have found that using Q-tips is actually perfect. You just cut them at an angle, so you have a nice sharp point on one side, and then you have the big side on the other. So if you're going up to an edge, you can easily take the masking fluid and use the sharp point to go right up to your edge and get it nice and, and exact. I always like to put my masking fluid in a smaller container like this instead of using it out of the big bottle and I find it doesn't dry out quite as fast. But this is the masking fluid I have right now. But I really do prefer Windsor & Newton masking fluid. So if I use the edge to get my fine points, then I can come back and use the big side of the Q-tip to fill in the larger points that I need to fill in. And this way I'm not ruining any brushes. When I'm done, I can just throw out the Q-tip. And if my Q-tip gets super mucky, I can just replace it with a different one. Super easy, and you don't get anything ruined. Once the masking fluid is over my entire image, you have to make sure it's completely dry before you proceed. If you put water on it when it's not completely dry, you're going to have a total mess. I usually don't use this much masking fluid. However, since I am doing a wood grain complete background, it uses a lot of layers. So I find using masking, unless I have a really simple shape that I'm going around, makes it nice because I can just wet down my whole page. I use a large brush to just add some water to the entire page, wetting down the whole background. And the nice thing about the masking fluid is I can just go right over it. Once I have the whole thing wet, then I make sure I even out the water so that I don't have any huge wet spots anywhere and that it's all just evenly wet. Before I wet down the paper, I made sure that I already mixed up my paint. For wood grain, I like to use a combination of burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue. So I've mixed them up into two areas on my palette. One is a little more gray, so it has a little more blue in it. And the other has a little more burnt sienna, so it's a little bit of brown. And when I do my first wash over the background, I'm going for basically the lightest highlights in the wood. But I don't want it to be perfectly even because wood grain is obviously uneven. So I'm going to use a little bit of the brown in there and a little bit of the gray to make that initial wash over the whole background look a little more uneven and natural like wood grain really is, making sure to still leave some light spots. Now where I want it to be darker eventually, I can add in some more paint at this stage so that when I'm building up my layers later, I'm not adding quite as much. So while it's still wet, I need a little more gray paint. I'll mix it up and then where I have some darker areas, I can add that in right at this point so that when I'm going in and adding everything later, it's a lot easier. So that's pretty good for a background. I've got some of that wood grain look going across. And the next step is just letting it dry. The nice thing about using the masking is that you can just go right over it to continue your lines and make it much easier for them to be continuous 
and look natural. When the masking is not there, it's obviously a lot harder to make it continuous if I had to keep going around the ski. Using a somewhat dry brush, I can add in that natural wood texture, making sure that I'm going in the direction that the grain of the wood is going. I use a couple different shades of color. Still just using those two initial colors, but just different mixtures of them give me nice different browns and grays to use. So I think that's pretty good for my wood grain. I'm pretty with happy with how that came out. I don't think I need to add more texture. So now that I have that done, sometimes I like to go through and just re-wet a few areas and lift a little color from them. It blends a little bit of that texture that I've put on in some areas. Now that my background wood grain is completely dry, I can move on to working on the skis. So I take my rubber eraser to get my masking fluid up. And I just very gently catch the edge of it. If I put it on thick enough, sometimes I can peel it off in one big sheet when I'm lucky not always lucky because I initially drew my pencil lines dark they stayed if you draw super light pencil lines when you pull the masking fluid up it will pull those pencil lines right off so I'm getting super lucky this time it usually does not come off this easily I usually have to go back over with the rubber eraser and kind of get the edges again in order to get it pull up lucky. All right, so I've gotten, I just take it, make sure all the little pieces are off. And again, you only want to do this after your background painting and everything around it is completely dry or else it will start pulling at that wet paint and you'll have a mess on your hands. Um, also, the rubber cement could pull up the wet paper and tear it a little bit if you're not careful. Um, you'll notice with the masking fluid that I have some rough edges here. Um, when you put the masking fluid on, sometimes it's really hard to see what the edge looks like. So at this point, I'll just take a small brush and come back in with that same wash that I had before. Again, to make sure you're not putting lines down the edge and that you're blending it back in with your wood grain. I just left it like that you would see that line so I take a little bit of water and spread it out a little and then it looks more natural make sure I got all my spots that I need all the edges look smooth I don't have any rough parts and that looks pretty good so I'm ready to start doing my skis now so I have added to my burnt sienna in ultramarine blue I have added I am using raw sienna burnt umber and Mars yellow um, they are all Holbein colors. I really like how soft the paints stay when you use Holbein colors. So I have, I have washed my water um, so that I don't have that dark water that I had from using doing my background. And I have all my paints ready and some area to mix them on my palette. 